It's no secret, employee engagement is hard to define, it's hard to sell the benefits, it's hard to get results despite of the billions of dollars being spent in this industry. You're probably watching this video because you already understand the incredible value of an employee engagement. We won't quote another Gallup poll at you, we promise. But where does one start? Alexander? I'm glad you asked. Look no further, HR friends. We're going to share with you the period, most period, practical period thing that you can do in order to boost employee engagement. We've interviewed executives, we've interviewed coaches, consultants, speakers, authors, we've podcasted, we've blogged, and at the end of the day, uh, uh, Josh, wait, what did we find? At the end of our journey, we still don't have a really solid definition, which is a little bit frustrating, I'm sure you felt that way, but we've realized that the reason why is because it's an incredibly complex industry. You're trying to marry psychology and complex demographics, unprepared leaders, distracted executives, all coming together in this thing that we call a workplace and trying to engage each other to achieve a goal. It's a hard thing to do. The term employee engagement was designed to maximize efficiency in our employees, but that doesn't encapsulate the entire experience. What matters most and what the future of the industry holds is all centered around how an employee experiences work. Think about this, employee A wakes up in the morning, gets dressed, hopefully brushes their teeth, heads to work. As they walk to work, what emotions are they experiencing in anticipation of being at work? Are they happy? Are they anxious? Are they frustrated? Do they feel enabled to get their job done? Do they feel the autonomous uh, ability to go and do what they need to do? The most important measure of success is how employees are experiencing work. So where do you start? Do you Google the latest and greatest employee engagement tech and trends? Do you implement a bring your pet to work day? Yes! <laughs> or do you finally relax the dress code? No, forget all that. It's simple. It's so simple, you're gonna be frustrated that you watched this entire video to get to this extremely simple solution. Yes, people, stop looking beyond the mark. Here's the secret sauce. Mid-level managers need to have regular one-on-ones with their employees. That's it. No for reals. We already know what you're thinking. Nobody has time for this. It's very hard to measure. You can't scale up. One-on-ones are a huge challenge, but it may be one of the most important things you can do for employee engagement. We interviewed so many leaders and experts in the industry to try to understand what the practical things we can do to help start increasing employee engagement, and almost all of them introduced some form of one-on-ones with employees. Let's just jump right in. Sally Thornton, one of our good friends, she is the founder and CEO of Forche. She gave us a very simple way to get started. What you could do next week that would help the whole team is to actually ask them. I believe that we don't have to have all the answers. So how might we ask questions of our team to say, how do we do better work together? What are the design constraints that fuel us? And how do we do it as a team? Um, and that, that I believe will allow people to have better work and better lives. So it's simple. Just ask your employees about how they experience work. Or you could take the three-step method from Natalie Kogan, CEO and creator of Happier Inc. Do a regular check-in with all of your employees individually. Schedule these five-minute check-ins with your colleagues or people who work on your team. Ask them how things are going and then don't talk and listen. It's not about work, how is this project? It's, hey, how is it going? And then you give them space to talk. There's a study that showed that 40% of employees say that when a colleague or a boss checks in with them, more than any other measure, expensive offsites, expensive benefits, helps them feel like they belong and helps them to feel more motivated to work harder. And I have now taught leaders that run enormous global organizations that do this practice as they travel around. And what I hear over and over again, it's the single simplest and most powerful tool that they have to create psychological safety and trust on their team. I'd like to add, sometimes it's hard to keep it in the five minutes, and that's because we don't do this very often. But if you're regularly scheduling these five minute chats, then you don't have to recap six months worth of work in five minutes. It doesn't even have to be feedback time. It can just be, how are you? What are you working on? Right. What's going well? How are you, are you getting along with your colleagues? Like, you know, right. whatever the conversation is, I think just spending time is so important. We asked Don Burke, founder of a modern HR firm and COO of Three Years Media, what the most effective employee engagement strategy is that we can start implementing now. Out of her 20 years of experience, she was so passionate about the consistency piece that she wanted to look directly into the camera. I'm gonna look right in the camera. It was making sure people were having regular cadenced one-on-one -on -one conversations with their team. 
It didn't have to be every day, it didn't have to be every week, but there had to be a regular cadence, you like that right here, listen to me managers, a regular cadence where you were spending one-on-one -on -one time with the employee, team member, whatever, to talk about not just here are the things I'm seeing, but really talk about what value did you, what value do you, did you think you brought to the organization? And it's simple and it's free. It's gonna take work, it's gonna take effort, it's gonna take scheduling, you have to be ready for that work and be prepared for it. But the dividends, the payoff is so huge that every amount of effort will be worth it. It is really important, I think, to engage people individually, but that's a lot more work. I had a coaching client once who was a CIO of a global organization, and he had 24 executive VPs that reported to him around the world. So he's in Cincinnati, and he doesn't you know, see these people face to face, and I'm telling him, you need to connect with them, you need to know their why, you need to, you know, I gave him some assessments, I said, you, you should really be thinking about how each person, he's like, with 27, I think I said 24, 27 direct reports, and I'm like, yeah. So he actually did the work, and he was profoundly impacted by it, and he made a lot of changes to his team and the work they were doing because he actually sat down and had conversations with them about, like one person was more wired to get visibility. They wanted to be in front of leadership, and so he was able to give him work and assignments and responsibilities that would get him that. And then another person's like, I really just like to crunch the data, and I like to do this. So he actually shifted. So once you actually do that work, I think you can get a lot more engagement, involvement, accountability, all that, but it sounds really overwhelming. Far and away, the biggest objection that we hear when discussing this idea of trying to implement regular one-on-ones with employees is this idea that we just don't have time. Who has time to do one-on-ones with all of the people that report to them? Time is one of the most precious resources that we all need a lot more of. Why in the world would you spend more of it doing something so trivial like asking employees how they're feeling. Kristen Harcourt, a global executive coach, facilitator, and speaker, gives us a little bit more insight on the subject. When the leaders have so much on their plate, right? They, they're going from meeting to meeting to right. meeting. Right. And then someone's saying to them, oh, and by the way, you need to do one-on-one -on -one sessions. Right. It can feel like, well, how am I supposed to do that? I don't have the time. Um, but it's helping them to understand it, which feels counterintuitive. When you actually make the time and have the one-on-ones and are proactive in that way, so much of the drama and the issues and the challenges that you're facing, they won't be the same because you're being proactive with the one-on-one -on -one conversations, right? If we can be proactive rather than reactive, we'll find that many of the little things that take away a lot of our time throughout the day will be resolved. So what's your excuse? What are you thinking of right now is the biggest reason why you wouldn't drop everything and start implementing this plan? probably you don't have time. We're not trying to pretend like we have discovered something revolutionary or something that every single other leadership coach isn't telling you. But listening is so fundamental. In order to have a positive employee experience, your employees have to be heard. And the best and most practical way to do that is just to start listening through one-on-ones with your employees. When employees feel heard, when they see that you care or that you're at least trying to make a better work experience for them, there is a major shift in their attitude. All of a sudden it's not me versus you or them versus us. It's I can see that they're trying, maybe I can try too. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget, today's HR has the privilege of bringing potential to work.